Which brand has lost you as a customer? Jiffy Lube. Dudes punctured my oil filter when they changed it, eventually ran out of oil like two weeks later and made me drag their ass through claims court to pay for repair edit. Impromptu duck Jiffy Lube thread edit 2. Man this company sucks edit 3. Never mentioning Jiffy Lube on Reddit again. I struck a nerve. Edit 4. PLS stop commenting. They did an oil change on my friend's car, but didn't put new oil in her car. This happened to a friend of mine too. Burned out her engine and had to have the whole thing rebuilt. Jiffy Lube offered her a coupon for 15% off her next oil change as compensation. Duck Jiffy Lube. Should have sued. The same thing happened to my grandfather's Mercedes when he took it into the dealership for an oil change. My father's Acura had a stripped oil plug on the pan. The mechanic at the dealership he bought the car from years earlier sternly told my father that he had no choice but to pay for a new pan. He explained that someone must have stripped the threads on the previous oil change. My father sat there calmly nodding, and asked how much it would be. When quoted some ridiculous price, my father said, since the only shop to change this vehicle's oil since I bought the car is this one, I guess you owe me a new oil pan. The look on the mechanic's face was of sheer dread. The way my dad tells it, you could tell the mechanic was trying to pass off his duck up as someone else's. My father had a drivetrain warranty and religiously changed the oil at the same dealership he originally bought the car from. I wonder how often this happens, where a shady mechanic breaks something then blames it on a prior mechanic's work. Progressive a lawnmower hit my parked car during work last year and it was terrible dealing with Progressive. The claims agent I got stopped communicating with me after a certain point and I ended up having to hound the lawn mowing company's owner to pay for my car's repairs. Oh duck yes. I was a delivery driver for a few months when I was younger and had delivery driver insurance with them. After a few months I quit and cancelled my insurance, but they just kept charging me for it. When I noticed this I called them and they said okay, we will send you a check in the mail for the amount owed. I get the check, cash it and go about my business. A few days later the bank says hey, your check bounced. I call Progressive and their answer is we sent that by mistake and we never said we'd pay you anyway. I answered then why the hell did you send it to me? It was a mistake. Do you have a record of us saying we'd send it? I answered no and there was a long cat and mouse conversation where it came down to, we're not comping you I cancelled in that exact conversation. In most states writing a bad check is a crime. They probably claimed they wrote it in error and cancelled payment on it. That's not a crime as long as you didn't stop payment because of insufficient funds. It's just super shady. Expedia God help you if they ever make a mistake on your booking. Their entire customer service infrastructure is designed to stonewall and frustrate you until you give up, even when the problem is clearly their fault. Oh gosh yes. We had so many bookings with Expedia that weren't actually booked and you only know once you're there. That one time I pushed them and they did an upgrade for messing up but seriously I'd much rather have my vacations go smoothly than get an upgrade. We actually lost a couple hours every time it happened, easily 34 times, and won't use Expedia anymore. DoorDash after learning about the whole tipping situation. This article covers both of the reasons I cancelled my account. The tipping model they had was skipping the drivers and going to the company. They instituted a new policy but drivers are reporting that nothing has changed. They also had a pretty significant data breach in May 4, 2019 and didn't disclose until September 26, 2019. www.cnet.com news DoorDash data breach didn't put a big dent in food delivery services business. They also deliver from restaurants that don't want them to deliver their product. Them and Postmates, both. Oh I hate this. I work at a restaurant that used to use DoorDash when the service first came to our area, about a year ago. Let me tell you. It sucks. We have our own delivery service, so I'm not too sure why DoorDash was popular with our customers. Possibly for their larger coverage area. Anyways. Our full menu was not on their app. They picked and chose what was on their app menu. We require a telephone number for our POS system to take a to go order. Our modifications were not in their app. So, a normal, Friday night rush door dash phone call would go something like this. Thank you for calling, business name, this is, my name, how can I help you? In broken English yes. Carry out order, okay sir. Can I have your telephone number please? No, name is, customer name, sir, I can't bypass this screen even if I wanted to without a phone number. 
finally get phone number and they start ordering can I get a, food item, with extra shrimp instead of chicken? Yes sir. That's a $4 up charge though. Oh no, I have to call the customer and ask if that's okay. Please hold they proceed to put me on hold for 5 minutes to call their customer, while them taking up a computer and a phone line on a busy shift. It took us refusing to accept DoorDash orders when we saw the caller ID, because they wouldn't tell us that they were from DoorDash, before they finally took us off of their app. It was hell. Same at my old place. We started sticking in a new print of our menu that had we deliver with the flat fee on it in all the orders which was 13 RD the price of the DoorDash fee and watched that dry up real quick down to maybe one order a day on average. The best were the moments when they would call in an order wrong and then a customer would call us to complaining sir, I'm sorry, this is exactly what was called in, you need to get refunded from DD not us, I took the order sir, I am the boss sir sticking it to DD, highest upvoted comment, must be industry night on Reddit. I wish every single restaurant I normally order from would do this. We used to order deliver all the time and every place had their own folks. Now I feel like even if I go to the website to order it takes me to a delivery site. I'd much rather order direct from the restaurant. I will never buy Campbell's Chunky Soup ever again. When that brand was started I was hooked. I loved everything they made. They had this one that had like small little burger patties in it. Ducking delicious. I ate at least one can a week. It was my go-to lunch as an unattached young adult male. Then they changed the recipe. Their meat turned to shit, every soup had a layer of grease on it. It was disgusting. I stopped buying their product and sent them an email about how they lost a lifelong customer. In their response back to me they apologized and gave me a gift to make up for it, a coupon to save 50 cents on a can of Campbell's soup hashtag x200b, edit, thanks for the gold stranger. I don't check Reddit on weekends and came back to a dead inbox. Had no idea so many people felt the same way about chunky soup. Is that what happened? I used to love chunky soups. Moved out of the country and eventually one store started selling them here, was so happy to have my wife try it. It was garbage and I felt embarrassed for hyping it up so much. When they first did it there was a sticker on their canoe improved recipe, nah bro, it was a new shittier recipe that used cheaper ingredients. Never truest to Campbell especially Pete Campbell. That guy is shady as duck. How's your soup? Not great, Bob. Bank of America. Their ATM was down so I had to go in and deposit my check. Paid all of my bills and had pretty much no money, this was during college, and they hit me with a $10 service fee which overdrew my account, and then they charged me a $35 overdraft fee. So, $45 I didn't have because their machine was down. The person I talked to on the phone was a complete dick and I decided to get rid of my account right then and there. He then gave me an attitude about cancelling. Duck that guy and fuck Bank of America. Boa literally handed me a fake $100, and when I asked them to replace it with a real one they called the cops on me for trying to pass a fake bill. A fake bill they literally just handed me. The cops reviewed the footage and informed the teller and manager that they were at fault. The bank manager refused to acknowledge their mistake or apologize, so I closed my account. They had the nerve to try and retain me afterwards. Duck Boa edit, lots of feedback. I'll try to clear up what happened. I was about 20 years old when it happened, and very stupid about how things worked. At the time I was too thankful to be off the hook to think about anything else. The cop made the teller take the bill back, and as far as I know took off after. I didn't even think to call the news or sue. The whole thing gave me pretty bad anxiety so I went home and tried to forget about it. Older me is mad that younger me didn't pursue anything. I hope that clears some things up. Thanks for all your kind comments, I didn't realize this was such a common thing. Well, what can we do to keep your business with us today? Keeping legitimate legal tender would be a nice start. Super dry because my friend and I were once at a snowboarding festival and they were giving out free stuff like snow goggles etc but their reps wouldn't give anything to us because we didn't fit the look. Edit, I know I'm not entitled to anything. It wasn't about getting free stuff, it was the quite clear message of you're not good enough. Victoria's Secret. In my 20s everything I owned was from versus over time I realized the quality was declining and the prices were absurd. I would have reactions to whatever they treated the fabric with and that was the last straw. I stopped buying from them. Edit, there's so many responses asking what I switched to. I like third love for bras. 
They have half sizes and as long as you don't remove the tag you can send back. I sent back two before I got my current fit. For underwear I like the boy shorts at Packed Apparel. I'm mindful of where my clothes come from and Packed was a choice I made a few years ago and am still happy with. You will have to be mindful of your washing cold water wash and tumble dry. I'm not in my 20s anymore so these things better suit my tastes and concerns. I have yoga pants in my closet nearly 10 years old from Versus that are barely showing wear, meanwhile the last three times I've been there I've worn my things out in less than a year. The quality has declined so much more than any other brand I've owned.